कृष्णा करुण सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत पते गोपेश गोपिका कंत राधा कंत नमोस्तुते हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी श्रीमद् भागवतम कंटो नंबर 7 चैप्टर 13 वर्स 27 Sukham asyat manorupam sarve ho paratistanu ho mahasang parshajan drishtva bhogan svapsyamisang vishan. Translation The actual form of life for the living entities is one of spiritual happiness, which is real happiness. This happiness can be achieved only when one stops all materialistic activities. Material sense enjoyment is simply imagination. Therefore, considering this subject matter, I have ceased from all material activities and I'm lying down here. This is a very wonderful story of a of a very elevated spiritual person who was basically uh, in the middle of a forest and uh, he was very relaxed and very peacefully awaiting whatever would come. And uh, some other sage was very curious about his lifestyle because he was living in the life of a python or very similar just being in one place and waiting for things to happen. And this conversation was taking place. So here he mentions that uh, material happiness, material happiness and material sense enjoyment is simply imagination. And it is uh, a very funny thing how, how the conditioned souls or the souls who are in this world, most of them, fall into this trap, this illusory trap. Uh, for example, over here in Chapala, in, in Mexico, this, are, this is a very frequent region for retired Americans. So they come here and they buy all these houses. They own, some of them, they own four, or five, six houses, luxurious houses with all amenities and etc. etc. And uh, they plan to enjoy in them and they make all arrangements to have Italian furniture and uh, all kinds of expensive items. But then, by the force of time, they have some problem, some disease. Like there is this man just next door who owns this uh, very beautiful house and it has been empty for three years because uh, the man, well, has a started to have a back problem so he can't even walk so now he has his whole fortune but he can't enjoy it and then if you go just down here to a village nearby then everybody's poor and they're struggling because they have no money and then they're lamenting that all oh, money and they're they're all chubby <laughs> they're eating very well but they don't have any money and they're suffering and so if you actually observe the nature of human beings who, who go or who aim uh, for happiness in this material world, they all are very kind of frustrated because it's either they don't have enough or they have too much or there's always a problem. And uh, because their whole uh, point of view towards the world is based on material objects and material circumstances, well, they're never happy. There, there's always some problem. And then, even worse, then they become envious or uh, angry. Like the, the millionaire of, that owns the house next door, uh, well, the house is empty, so he could easily rent it out, but he's so attached to his uh, so-called paradise home 
that uh, he can never use it himself, but he won't rent it to anyone else either. So then there's uh, signs of envy and things like that, instead of just, just doing the, the needful. So this material happiness that uh, we, we look for it and we try to hunt for money and for pleasure and women or power, or all these things. But then when we have them, they actually become like a, like a rope around our neck that uh, strangles uh, the same object that we're looking for is the same thing that's causing all our suffering. So uh, this is not real happiness. That's why it's illusory. It's, it's not that there is no happiness if I have lots of money. I, of course, I will experience some happiness. But the problem is that it's not lasting. It's a very flickering thing. And it's like trying to capture a snake in water. You can grab it for a little while and then it will go away. Or it will even attack you. So very, very risky. And uh, the, the first part says, the actual form of life for the living entities is one of spiritual happiness, which is real happiness. And it says, Spiritual happiness is when one stops materialistic activities. So, the Vedas, the Vedic way, is about reducing materialistic activities to the minimum, just to maintain oneself, and then investing the rest of her time in actual happiness, which is a spiritual happiness. Now, what is an easy way to achieve spiritual happiness? Well, it begins with understanding that the happiness comes from within. It's not from these objects of the world. So the, the most recommended process to achieve that in the Vedas is called Sankirtan or uh, Harinam, the chanting of the names of Lord Hari. And if you watched the first part of this video carefully, there was this mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. So, you can chant this mantra by just uh, sitting here uh, in a room, silent room, where you're not disturbed, and uh, with a rosary or beads, or just count with your fingers, and chant this mantra many times, for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, as much as you can. And then you will actually start to experience spiritual happiness. If if you've been doing this for a while, you know what I mean, but if you're new, you just have to try it for a while. And it's very simple. It's just simply singing the names of God, asking God, please engage me in your service. And the funny thing is that one can actually be much, much more happy by doing this process than if I'm poor struggling or lamenting that, oh, I need to work, uh, I need three jobs and things like that. Or if I'm a millionaire, uh, taking care of all my possessions and someone's going to steal them or whatever. If you just forget all those material things and then just sit down and chant this mantra, you will experience another category of happiness which is not available through material means, spiritual happiness. And this is real happiness. In the beginning, a spiritual life seems like a very austere or, or more like a medicine that doesn't taste very good. Like, I remember the first time I chanted uh, this mantra, I, I was not able to chant for more than 10 minutes or something. I was uh, all anxious and I couldn't just remain seated in one place. And that is because we're used to looking outside in this world and through the senses. And when the senses suddenly they're not engaged and uh, they're forced to calm down, well, they, they get a little anxious. <laughs> so, so it is a process, but one must understand this uh, very important choice that I want to be happy and everyone wants to be happy. So if I want to be happy, how can I be happy? I have two main branches, material happiness or spiritual happiness. If I choose spiritual happiness, whenever I feel uh, the need, this uh, gap in my heart that I need happiness, instead of trying to fill it up with material things, 
we try to fill it up with spiritual things. And then this is the, the Vedic way, where life is all spiritual. In the beginning, as I was saying, well, it's a transition, but I suggest try it out and uh, you never know. You will find something very special there. More special than whatever we can find in this material world. If you have any comments or questions, please visit our website, thevedicway.org. Thank you. Hare Krishna.